Happy Thursday, everybody! Happy Thursday. So this week we're going to do uh, something wooky, a little bit different. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, but I love my pumpkin carving. I used to do cutout, and then I started doing surface carving, and then I think I've done one like three shade carving. So I thought I would take some time, tell you the difference between those, and like show you some of the tools that I actually have because it's kind of turned into quite the little operation. You're like a expert amateur. I've seen some amazing pumpkins and stuff. I don't do like the actual wood carving like ones. I have those tools and stuff, not that awesome. I just use patterns and I have a lot of patience with it and I yes. really like doing it. So this week I'm actually gonna do a pattern, the only pattern that has ever failed because it was mm -hmm. when I very- Defeated you. Yeah, it was my <laughs> very first surface carving and I made a very rookie mistake. So I wanted to show you guys what um, kind of the steps that I am now trying to implement yes. so I don't make a mistake again. Not only that, but I think you're gonna sprinkle in some tips and tricks so you guys get an idea of how best to make it work yeah. for you. Yes, little yeah. things that I've learned along the way. Step one, I usually know my pattern before I'm actually doing the pumpkin. So this is my pattern. Um, I kind of just print it out so I can see what the size is. So I know like, yeah, that's gonna fit. Or like, this is how much wiggle room I have. Step two, go to your library to print out your pattern or stencil. Step two and a half. Don't rip your paper because then you have to tape it back up. Step three, get your pumpkin. I don't like round. Round hard to carve. So I'm just getting ready to take off the top of my pumpkin. I've done it once where I've gone through the bottom, but I actually prefer the top. So I've got my pattern just taped up here to make sure that I give enough room. Then I'm gonna do just a little notch so that I know which way to put the top in. I also just make sure that I'm making the hole wide enough that I can actually get my hand in there and clean out the pumpkin. One really large tip is you wanna go in 45, about 45 degrees once all the insides are out and the you've scraped everything and the pumpkin's been sitting out, it's gonna lose the moisture and the lid will actually sink into the bottom and then you're gonna find yourself grabbing to the bottom of the pumpkin, trying to get your lid back out. So before we get carving, I just wanted to go over some of the tools that I have because I've actually collected quite a few. Obviously with the scoop, I'm gonna use this nice little scoop. I like the one with the ridges in it because uh, it helps actually scrape the outside a lot better. I've got a larger saw here that I actually only really use to take off the top because I, I like the larger teeth that cuts through a lot better. If I'm doing a normal just cutout pattern, I'll use usually this little poker to just poke through my pattern. I have a couple of these and I don't particularly like them because that's assuming you can just roll along a pattern and but there's a bunch of corners in a pattern that that does, actually doesn't help that much with. Just the surface carving or any of the shading that I'm doing, I have more of these tools. My favorite one is absolutely this and I'll put some links down in the description. So this is just kind of a self carving that's actually used for wood carving. It's called a speed ball. You can actually take this guy off See how quickly I can show you. Um, and I've got a ton of different scoops. V scoop, this one's really, really good for corners. A larger one to kind of even out if you need to make a deeper cut. All right, so with the speed ball, you just loosen this up. And you're gonna put your, loosen it up just a little bit more. You're gonna put your end in, tighten it back up, and then you have it. And then you just change out all the tips. So these, you're gonna use to kind of smooth out areas. I do a lot of intricate stuff, so I don't have a wide enough area that I might need to scoop out. I actually just take my scraper and I'm gonna get this guy all off. If you're doing just like a decorative carving, um, you don't need to worry about taking out more of the inside because you don't need the light to shine through. If you're doing a surface that you kind of want your light to shine through, like in this pattern, you're going to need to take down the inside of the pumpkin about two and a half an inch. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because every time I do it, I'm not getting as much light as I would like to shine through. I actually bought this tool because it gets it a lot quicker. If you look at the inside, I guess the actual inside of the pumpkin is about just a little over an inch. So that's a lot of extra pumpkin that has to be taken down. And then the last type of surface carving that I've done is the three shading, but I've only done one of those, and that was the Jack Sparrow one that I did, where you're doing some cutout, 
some surface carving and then you're actually coloring in some areas with black permanent marker so it kind of gives this three type shading carving effect so real quick I just went through with this one and I just wanted to show you that it brings it out a lot more and I only really need to focus on shaving it down to a half inch where I'm actually putting my pattern next I'm gonna use some of this wax fee wax fee <laughs> wax fee sale paper in a blue color because I've got it in red and white but I had to buy this on Amazon so I'll put a link for that in the description so blue side down pattern up we're gonna go and tape this, which is my least favorite part. And the reason why I hate doing this part so much is because you want your pattern to be flat across the pumpkin, obviously, and to do that, it involves kind of creasing the paper, but you don't want to crease the pattern. I actually made myself notes down here because I totally did this wrong the first year, and most patterns tend to work this way. So it's more of like a negative image in terms of what am I gonna cut out. So the white is going to stay. So my gray is when I'm going to carve, but I'm gonna cut out black parts. And now I'm just gonna take a ballpoint pen. And now for the moment of truth. Let's see if it works. So looks like it's gonna be a little difficult. I know this looks super, super crazy, um, but I usually have my pattern nearby um, so I can kind of tell what I'm looking at. I tried doing something different. I actually, I had tried so that I knew where to go. I like had scribbled in what I was gonna cut out, obviously. I don't know if I would have done that again. So I actually spent some time going back through and tracing this in pen because Linus is face was a complete mess. Usually doesn't happen, but it's a pretty intricate one, and I think this is what happened to me last time. So next up, we are going to use the carving tool, and I'm using the smallest one since these are such fine lines, and get to work. Now I just got the cutout left. And sometimes your blade breaks. I like to try to go in at a certain angle just so enough that the light will get through. I did this last night because I wasn't able to finish. There wasn't enough lighting for the video and for me to actually see doing it. So I'm actually just going to take some Vaseline and any exposed pumpkin, you're just gonna rub it on there and that will help keep it from maybe shriveling up. And then for the inside, I usually use an antibacterial spray. I haven't used anything with bleach because I don't know, something tells me that would kind of like kill the pumpkin. Once the pumpkin starts molding from the inside, that's when it's gonna kind of concave on itself. And I only do it a couple times because when you spend so much time doing these, it's kind of a pain when they die off pretty easily. I have the tea lights, but I don't normally use these anymore because they burn out really fast outside. 
Um, plus they're gonna make the inside dark. So with these, which I actually just got at Michael's for like six bucks, um, I don't have to worry about it darkening the inside or going down there and changing it. And it flickers a little bit. It's like a magical candle. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. So shall we light it up? Light it up. All right, let's turn off the lights Make real quick. Make it happen, Captain. Oh yeah. Look All how right. spooky. Is that cool? So yeah. we will go put it outside. Very cool. So here's the final look out by our front door. That left pumpkin, I might have carved down a little bit more on the inside, but I think the rest of it turned out pretty fancy. Makes me want to do another one. So I hope you enjoyed this week's uh, pumpkin tips. And tricks. Stay tuned for next week. We have some more fall Spooky. Halloween fun. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.